All right, what up, y'all? It's Matt Shop. Um, you can see I got my tiller out in front of me right here, and this is a Troy built horse. It's a PTO model. I'll show you what that means here on the tiller in a second. But uh, yeah, this is an awesome tiller. But I got a slight problem. I was tilling up a spot trying to get more plants in the ground, and I was working it pretty hard the day before. But you know, I wasn't even pushing it that bad um, the day this happened. But you can see. When we pull the cord, we got nothing. And I'm not too happy about this, obviously. Um, maybe the connecting rod broke. Maybe a valve got bent or broke or something. Um, I don't think the crankshaft broke. What happened was I was tilling up the spot, basically done for the day. And I was just trying to, you know, till up the spot and just fluff the soil up and then I was done. Like I wasn't even breaking really hard clay or anything. And it went <laughs> like a backfire is what it sounded like. And then it went do 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 And it died. And it hasn't run since then. And it's not going to because there's zero compression obviously. So something broke. But you can hear... You can hear the valves going dit, 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 dit. Pew, 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 pew. and I can smell the gas and it's sucking the gas down in there so I don't know because you know I don't know what broke something broke and I'm gonna have to rip this whole thing apart and take it out of here to see what's broken and you can see um, I have a video I have a bunch of videos of me restoring this thing. What I did was I bought it cheap off of Craigslist and I restored it. And I have all the videos. I just got to edit them and, and put them up here. But uh, yeah, this is an awesome tiller. It's an awesome tiller. It's one of the best tillers ever made, honestly. But uh, I'll make a whole separate video on that. But you can see it's got four bolts right here down in there. One, two, and then two on the bottom. So I got to take that off. And it has a little eyelet right here where I can hang it and pull it off and get to disconnect all the linkages and wires. I've gone through this thing. I've painted the whole thing. I've taken it all apart and, you know, restored it. But, um, because it was in bad shape before. And if I ever get around to editing those videos, y'all will see that. But I want to know what y'all think in the comments down below. Uh, what do y'all think broke? You know... When we pull on the pull cord, it's obviously the crankshaft's still good because it spins, right? So hopefully I'll get off easy. This is a seven horsepower IC. It's supposed to be the um what does that stand for? Commercial grade, whatever, you know, back in the day in the mid nineties, early to mid nineties. Um it's supposed to be like one of the better Briggs and Stratton motors meant for like uh, industrial commercial that's what that stands for so it's a Briggs and Stratton flathead so it can't be too complicated but I'm gonna have to rip it all apart and see what went bad but you can see this is a PTO model and it's got the the spot to engage the PTO right there and then it's got this part where the clutch dog is and then the tiller right here and this goes on there and that's the tiller attachment you can take it off and you can see my tines are pretty worn too and obviously has a bunch of stuff on it because when it stopped working took it all apart and put it back up here and I hadn't had time to clean that all up but I'm getting sidetracked here so we don't have any compression I swear I can hear the piston going up and down. I know y'all can hear that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So I don't think the connecting rod broke. Maybe a ring broke. Maybe the rings are just worn out. I don't know because it was a very loud popping noise. You know, it went like a like a gun like a shotgun like a backfire it was extremely loud and then it died so I was like yeah it's low on gas right 
So I was like, oh, I just ran out of gas. Put more gas in it. Well, um, that didn't work. Came back up to the shop and got a spark plug um, wrench. Took the spark plug out, put my finger over it, and it had zero compression. So that tells me something's broken. And the process of elimination here, the process of elimination is crankshaft's good. I can hear the piston going up and down. So the connecting rod didn't break. Um, a wrist pin probably didn't break because I can hear the piston going up and down. I think it has something to do with the valves. You know, I'm not an expert in these Briggs and Stratton motors, but, um, you know, they're simple and the parts are cheap. But this thing is getting old. Uh, the carb, the carb body is a very weird design. It's a two part carb and, uh, very, very strange design. It's old school and the two halves warp right and then it leaks and then you gotta like double up on gaskets or like put some gasket maker or something on there and a brand new carb that isn't a Chinese carb is like you know a hundred and something bucks and I can go and get a Harbor Freight Predator motor and put it on here which I really don't want to do because uh, this is all made in USA this is old school stuff and I really don't want to put a Chinese motor on here but um you know, if it comes down to it, what I'm probably going to end up having to do is get a Honda motor, and um, that way it'll still be red. Get a Honda motor and swap it out. But, um, yeah, I'm not too happy about this. Luckily, this happened at the end of my growing season. You know, once everything was basically in the ground and I didn't really need it anymore, all, there's always some spot you could till up and you know put more stuff but for now she's dead so I'll make a whole video on this whole thing you know describing you know why this is better than other tillers and all that stuff that's not what this video is about and don't forget to check the links in the description because I'll link y'all up to um, some compression testers on Amazon they got a bunch of good ones on there because, you know, if you ever have a problem like this, you're going to want a compression tester to make sure you figure out the problem. And, you know, if it's new rings or whatever, you're going to want a compression tester to make sure everything's good. So don't forget to look out for those links in the description. But um, I'm pulling the motor off of this thing. So let's just get to it. I'm going to pull it off and set it on the ground and get it on the bench. And I got to take it all apart and figure out what's wrong with it. Nice if I had another person. Man, they don't make them like they used to. This thing weighs a ton. Oh my gosh. All right, well, it's off now, so. Oh. All right, so I got that thing off. Um, I really don't want to have to go get a cheap Chinese Harbor Freight Predator motor and put it on here because it's not going to be the quality of that so let me get this thing over to the bench and then we're going to take a look at it and see what's wrong with it 
So, you know, I could easily just go get a um, Predator motor and bolt it right up to there, but I really don't want to do that, obviously. I might steal a Honda GX motor, like one of the red ones, uh, one of the horizontal shaft, you know, red ones that are really good, but I'm not buying a new one because they're super expensive, and I have a northern catalog right here. And we're going to see what the price is. GX390, that's too big. Right here. 190, 200 cc, GX200. Recall start. $329. So... I'm going to try to steal one off of something if I can't get this thing fixed. So let me get this thing on the bench and let's see what's up with it. Alright y'all, so we got this thing on the workbench now. Now I got all my tools laid out here and stuff, so I'm going to take the head off. I'm going to take all this stuff off the top right here and take the head off and look down in there and see what I can see from the top so I don't have to drain all the oil and take all that crap apart just yet. So. Let's get started. I'm going to speed this thing up so you don't have to sit here and watch me for hours doing this to get all this off of here. And I'm going to, you know, lay it down and let's get started.
All right, so we got a valve problem. Uh, the exhaust valve is messed up. The intake valve works. I think the spring broke on the exhaust valve. Uh, or the keeper popped off, the keeper broke something, I don't know. I only broke one head bolt though, this one in the back. So now I gotta take the carb off. Flip it around, take the carb off, and look at that little side panel and see what the deal is. It's actually looking a lot better than I thought it was, so let's get that thing off. Alright y'all, so we got valve problems, and you can see I got my light on here, so hopefully y'all can see this better, but this valve was up like this when I took it apart, and you can see it's not supposed to do that. So when we rotate it, we can see that it's working now, but um, what happened was, and I thought the keepers, they broke or something, well, they got worn out, and I thought they might have fallen down in the motor, but they were still wedged up in there, they were just worn out. So I have them right here. And you can see right here they're worn out. You see in the middle, there we go. You see in the middle where it's supposed to, where it's all smooth. It's supposed to be a, like a pronounced like it's supposed to be raised right there, but it's all worn out. So they were like this, and then they just slid off the valve and just slid down, and the valve didn't work anymore. So I got to go get new ones. It's like six bucks for these two new ones at the local store. Um, that way I don't have to pay shipping and all that. So, you can see how they sit on there, like that, I'm pretty sure they go like that, um, and you can see it's worn out. So, I'm going to have to go get new ones, um, so I'm going to go get new ones of these, and new intake valve keeper, it's just like a piece of uh, sheet metal, and then I'm going to go get a new head bolt because this one snapped. So I'm gonna give y'all a close up here real quick and then I'm gonna run to the store and get some new parts. And then we'll put it all back together and I gotta go through this whole thing in a different video. I gotta take these valves out, clean all the carbon up, um, clean all the carbon and all the gunk out of here. Um, I might get these valves resurfaced. Doesn't look that bad but I'm probably gonna get it resurfaced just like if I can for cheap. So I'm gonna have to do that, get lapping compound, put it under here, relap them with the tool and get the seats nice and um, good. And then I'm gonna have to put those new keepers on here, check the valve clearance, it's gonna be a whole thing. So that's a separate video, but let me give you all a close up real quick here. All right, so you can see right here, um, you can see way better. It's going up and down now, but you can see that little sheet metal keeper on the bottom of the intake valve to the right is still on there, but I'm gonna get a new one because I'm not doing this again. So, that push rod goes up and down, and of course, after I do all this, I gotta check the clearances because they were already bad to begin with. I know they were because I checked them before, but I didn't wanna have to do all this, so now I have to do it. 
Um, but yeah, there's y'all's close up, and there's the keepers. So I'm lucky. I got away good on this one. I got away real good on this one because they could have fallen down in the motor, fallen down those little holes. You know, it could have been a whole thing, but for like 12 bucks, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever it takes to get the whole thing done um, and get all that carbon out of there. This thing should be running way better. And uh, yeah, it should be fixed up nice. Um, I've been working on this tiller motor because it blew up on me. So what we're going to be doing today is cleaning all this carbon up off of this motor. And uh, first I got to get these valves out of here. So let me rip these old valves out and get them all cleaned up. So let me get them out and then we're going to see what we're working with. And if y'all need any of these tools, as usual, I'll put links in the description to all the stuff you see me using in this video so that y'all can buy it, you know, you can check it out and get what you need cheaper than the big box stores. So let's get started and let's get these valves out of here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started ripping out these valves. And I might have to take this thing off, I don't know. Hopefully not. Well, I guess I didn't even need a tool for that. This worked a lot easier without that stupid tool. There's the intake valve. I'm putting this on this side. Alright, so that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, that tool is probably going to help putting them in, but taking them out was easy. We got the exhaust valve right here. And it's looking pretty good. I'm going to relap it, obviously. That's a little piece of dirt. Um, and then we got the intake valve here. And that's looking pretty good. It's not pitted or anything in any way, so I'm just going to relap that, and that should be good. Alright, so we're going to get a before and after here um, of the carbon buildup. I'm going to, I got a little mini drill here. I don't have a die grinder on me, but uh, I got this little mini drill here, and I'm going to clean that up. And I'm going to get in the ports with this and clean those up and we're going to get all that crap out of there. <laughs> Alright, so I got my light on here so we can get y'all a close up of all this carbon gunk. You can see all of it here. That's just oil I put on that broken bolt right there. But let's get a close up. And you see all the carbon gunk all down in here. There's chunks of it all down in there. 
I don't know if this has ever been gone through before, but there's your before. And now let's get it cleaned up and let's see our after. I blocked it off down here so it wouldn't get all that crap down in the bottom end of the motor. So here's a before the head, a little bit of before the head. I already got to working on it a little bit, but here's a before the head, before I clean it up. It is not coming off. You can see I had to scrape a bunch of this crap off of here. I got the acetone out, I got all that out. It's not coming off. So it's just gonna be one of those things. I'm gonna have to get in here with some sandpaper or something.
we go. Progress. All right, I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. We'll be back when it's all cleaned up. All right, so now it's on to the next step. I have my head right here all cleaned up and polished up and all the carbon removed, so that's good to go. And then I have my valve grinding compound here and my valve lapping tools. And we need to relap the valves to make sure they seat good. And then I'm going to check the clearance right here, but first I want to lap them um, so that I know they're not going to be further down in the seat. I mean, it's not going to remove that much metal, but it just makes sense to do that first. So we have valve grinding compound and the valve lapping tools. And if y'all need any of this stuff, make sure to check out the links in the description because I'll link it up um, where y'all can find it on Amazon cheaper than the big box store. So make sure to check that out. But I already cheated a little bit and opened it up. But this is Permatex Valve Grinding Compound. And this stuff is like grit and grease. Um, they make different ones. This one seems to be pretty coarse, but they make this one. And then there's, I'm sure there's all different types of professional kinds and all that. But this is what we're going with because it's a tiller and not a race car. So I got these from Advance, but I'll link y'all up like I said. This was cheaper than the other places because it came for two for the price of one. Like at other stores, there were one, and then you had to buy both of them. It was like double the price. So I got these, and let's stop talking and get to work here. All right, so we got our valve grinding compound right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take these valves out and get this done. So I'm going to take this one out, and I don't know if this is going to be a good before and after, but... There we go. You can see that it's not pitted, it's not messed up at all. I just need to reseat it better. And uh, I'm just going to grind it in. This is the exhaust valve. And then leave y'all out of focus here. Here's the intake valve. And I really wanted to get these refaced, but I took it to the shop and they were like, dude, don't even worry about it. Just reseat it. It looks good enough. And, uh, you know. It's a tiller, like I said, it's a tiller, not a race car. So I'm gonna get this thing reseated and hopefully it should be good to go. We're gonna put these, well, let's see. Let's start on the intake valve. So what we're gonna do is get some of this good stuff right here and we're gonna put some all on here. And then I'm going to dab just a little bit on here. This is so hard to do behind the camera, but... Alright, then we're going to drop it in here. And now I have these different size suction cups, but I'm going to go with this little one and see how this does. So spit on the suction cup. And now when we do this, we're going to do like we're starting a fire. We're going to go back and forth, and we're going to push down, put some downward pressure on it. Now, this is an important part. Um, you need to make sure that the two parts, uh, what are they called, the little push rods, you need to make sure they're down as far as they go. So this is that top dead center of the compression stroke right now. So the valves will sit all the way down in the seat. That way... You know, they're all the way down, and you're not fighting the little push rods holding it up. So, this suction cup is going to be a fight already. And lift it up, move it around. Yeah, see, it's going to want to fight me the whole way, isn't it? Try the other suction cup. You hear the change in the tone a little bit? They say you want to do this until it gets quiet, but... Alright, so we're going to do this one, 
and then we're gonna move on to that one. So I'll be back once I get this thing fully ground down and good, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now we got the intake valve done, so now we're gonna do the exhaust valve, and then I'll give you all a close-up of both of them when we're done. Now make sure you don't get it on this part right here because you'll grind that seat up in there, um, the little sleeve down in there, the bushing, whatever the hell it's called. You'll grind it all to heck, so don't get it on there. And you got to clean it all out and flush it all out with brake cleaner or something after you're done because uh, you don't want any of this grit left. These suction cups, they fight you the whole way. And the whole idea is to rotate it and move it around. And I don't think I put enough on here. Man, these suction cups suck. Huh. All right. Well, I'm going to leave y'all here, and then we'll check back once I get this one done. All right, so now we got these valves relapped. So I got some rubbing compound and some polishing compound um, that I went after it with after I used that Permatex stuff to shine it up some more. And we're going to see if I can focus on this. Alright, so you can see, uh, obviously there's that little groove that goes all the way around it. Um, but it's an old used valve, so... As long as the two surfaces mesh, I'm sure it'll be fine. But like I said, if I do this again, it probably needs new valves and valve seats. And that's just way past uh, what I'm willing to do on this right now. I mean, it's not a go-kart or something like that. It's a tiller. So as long as it gets my job done, I honestly don't care too much. So there's that one. And now... There's the exhaust valve. Now the exhaust valve was a pain in the butt to grind because it's way harder, way, way harder um, metal, obviously, because it's so hot. Um, it's a way harder metal, so this was a pain in the butt to grind, and it didn't grind hardly for you know what, but I did the best I could on it, so there's that. And I'll show you all the seats, and now i got to set the valve lash on this thing. So let's take a look at the seats here real quick. All right, so here's the valve seats, and uh, I got my little light on here, and we can see that I polished up the intake port and the exhaust port. Um, I know it's not perfectly polished, but it's way better than it was, and I got all the casting imperfections out of there, and I polished it up as best I could. That way, you know, um, I don't have to worry about all those casting imperfections and stuff like in that intake port right there There was a ton of casting imperfections down in there and I got it all smoothed out And of course I roughed it up a little bit because of the intake port so This one is as smooth as I could get it, but man it is a pain to get in that one right there So let's look at the seats and you can see the seats They're looking pretty good. There's a little groove that goes all the way around it, but it's not actual deep groove it just I guess that's just how it meshed to this valve. Um, you know, they're used valves and seats. It isn't perfect, but 
as long as he gets the job done. Like I said, it's not a race car, a race go-kart or something. It's a tiller. So as long as it breaks up the ground and tills it in and gets my plants in the ground, I'll be happy. All right, so now we got to set the valve clearance on this thing. And I already know there's like next to none because I already checked it. But how we're going to do this is, and this is per the book, uh, per the manual, we're going to rotate it. Let's try to. Okay, the exhaust comes open. Okay. In okay, so you see the valves up? That's the intake stroke. Okay, now it's coming up. That's the compression stroke. That's top dead center of the compression stroke right there when both the valves are fully seated and the pistons all the way up. Now the book says to go a quarter inch past that. So I got my dial calipers here, and you can see it's set to, well, close enough, a quarter inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it down about a quarter inch past top dead center. And I don't know exactly why they want to do this, but that's what we're going to do because that's what the book says to do. So right there. So we got it a quarter past top dead center on the compression stroke. So now what we're going to do is both of these valves are closed and they're sealing, a, they're grabbing, sealing a lot better than they were before. But um, we're going to check it. So on this motor, the intake valve is five thousandths to seven thousandths of an inch. Um, in this setup right here, how it is, five thousand to seven thousandths of an inch. And the exhaust port is nine thousandths to eleven thousandths of an inch. So I'm just going to set it to six thousandths and uh, ten thousandths. So right now we have five thousandths, point zero, if you can see that. 0 0.006. Okay, so this is the 6,000. So this is what I'm going to set it to. So we're pushing down on it, and it has no valve clearance at all. It won't even go in there. And you can see, if I put it in there, like if I push down on it, stick it in there, it will not go. It is not going in there. And I know it's kind of dark in there, kind of hard to see, but trust me, it's not going in there. So we're going to have to take them out and grind them on the, the um, workbench. Or, you know, grind them with the end of them with a Dremel. Um, you can take the material from either the push rod or the valve. But I wouldn't recommend doing it from the push rod because that's more permanent. Obviously, if you mess up the valve or if it gets worn, you can replace it. But the push rod, you got to tear the whole motor back down to get to it. So, we got a ten thousandths here. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, see? It's, it's hanging open. See? Nothing. So, we're going to have to grind these valves. Now, I want to I want to tell y'all, be careful when you do this. Make sure you have everything set up perfectly. And make sure, you know, you don't let that valve get caught in a bench grinder. Because uh, if you destroy that valve, you're going to be pissed after doing all that lapping and grinding and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. So, make sure you just nick it. Just roll it and nick it. And I'm going to take you all over to the bench grinder here. And we're going to see if we can get this thing ground right. But um, I need to double check all this and make sure it's good before we do that. But let's head over to the bench, the bench grinder and let's get these things ground. All right, so we're over at the bench grinder. And excuse all the trash around here, all the stuff in the background. But um, we're at the bench grinder and I have the intake valve here. And I'll be extremely careful when you do this. Support it and just nick it. I'm telling you, just nick it. Do not let it get caught up in there. Bend it. Nick any other part of it. Just grind the stem right here, the flat spot where it meets the um, push rod right here just grind that down a little bit and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grind it and go check it grind it and go check it grind it and go check it and then we're going to check back um when i got them perfect and we're going to see what it looks like then because i'm not going to keep running back and forth obviously so let's get this thing ground
Gently do it. I mean, do it a little bit at a time, because if you take too much off, you're screwed. And try to keep it as parallel as possible. Better go check that. All right, now I have the exhaust valve here. And the squash bug on top of my grinder. A little at a time. Alright, so the exhaust valve is good, so now we're going to go back over to the workbench and we're going to check them and you're going to see they're good now. Alright, so now we're going to check the valve clearance here, valve lash. We got uh, 10 thousandths of an inch right here. And it fits and it's good. Just a tiny bit of resistance here. On the exhaust valve. And then we got 11 thousandths here. Is it? Yeah. Pushing down. And it's tighter, but we got 11 thousandths here. And that's the upper spec for this. And then let's try 12 thousandths. I got them a little bit looser than I wanted to, more loose than I wanted them to be, but uh, that's 12 thousandths and that didn't go in there. So it's within spec, so we're good. I mean, it should close up a little bit once it um, you know, works its way down the seat. It, once I run it a while, it's gonna, they should close up just a little bit, I'd imagine. Um, but that one's good. That one's within spec. So now we're going to go over to the other one. And we got seven thousandths and eight thousandths here. Seven thousandths was the upper of the spec. And that one's just a tiny bit looser than I would have liked. But um, like I said, eight thousandths is not going in there. And seven thousandths is perfect, like you know, you just saw it. So that one's within spec, so it's good. Like I said, make sure you know, um, don't go crazy because you're gonna screw yourself if you go crazy with that, you know, with the grinder. Um, you could really mess it up, and then you're gonna have to replace the valve. So make sure you go into circular motion so that you get a good even grind on that. But now we have to put these valve springs back on here. So we need to put these valve springs back on here. So this valve spring goes in here. Um, and this one. Goes in here. All right, so there's a trick to getting these valve springs in here. And um, if you all remember from the beginning of the video, or if this ended up being too long and I just split it up or whatever, I went and rented this from an uh, auto parts store, and yeah, this thing isn't going to work on here. So we have a trick that I'm going to show you all. All right, so the trick for putting these valve springs back in here is zip ties so we're going to use these zip ties 
and we're going to compress this spring and then we're going to zip tie it compressed and stick it in there and then we're going to cut the zip ties out. So let me go over to the bench vise so we can compress this thing down and you're going to have to have a bench vise to do this but uh, we're going to get this thing compressed and get them in there. Alright so now we're at the bench vise here and I have the exhaust valve spring in my hand so we're going to compress this thing down. And I hope this works well. It should. Be careful with these stupid springs because uh, you don't want it in your eyes. You don't want it to sling out and go right in your eye, obviously. So. Just like that. So be careful when you do this. I'm probably going to have to compress it down pretty far. Wow, this spring is so weak. Don't even need the vise. Wow. Okay, well. Now you can see it's compressed. That probably needs to be a little bit stronger. Alright, so my little light just died on me here, but uh, you get the idea. So we're going to go put this back in the... Um, back in the motor now and we're going to do the other for the other spring. We're going to do the same for the other spring and we're going to put this thing back in the motor now. All right, so we got this thing lit up here so y'all can see it. Um you can see the springs are in there and I mean this trick works perfectly. See, it just compresses them just like that and you don't have to mess with the stupid tool and you don't have to buy the tool if you don't have it. So it just goes in there just like that and this is the whole reason I took this apart was because uh my old keepers like this, they wore out. The center group was worn out. So I got the two new ones for the exhaust valve right here. And then I already put the new one on, but um, it's this little keyhole keeper right here. And uh, that goes on here. Here, I'll show y'all. Come out of there. See, it's got like a keyhole, so this just goes on there like that and it holds it on there just like that. So, you can see how easy it is to do with these springs on here, but um, it's gonna be very fidgety for me to get those other little retainers on in here. I'm not gonna bore y'all. So I'm gonna have to fish them up in here, and then we're gonna cut these uh, zip ties off. And make sure you plug these oil ports right here, because if you drop one of these down in there, you are gonna be so mad. All right, so I got this one in here. Um, I didn't want to film it because if those little stupid little things fell out again, I would be um, sitting here for a while. But on this one, I can show y'all. You got the keyhole right here. Okay, there it's on. Now we're gonna cut it. This is gonna be really hard to see. Let me get a close-up here. All right, that's as close as I'm going to be able to get y'all. But make sure you pull the little keyhole part and see there it goes again. It's a miracle these things stay together when they're running. It really is. Okay, the keyhole is off again. All right, there. It's on. It's right where it needs to be. All right, so now we're gonna take this, and there's the zip tie. Okay. And then we're gonna rotate it around. Well, I might pull this out. Go ahead and pull that other broken piece out. And I'll see if we can rotate it without popping it off. There it is right there.
Cut it. Well, and pull it out. Ah. And there it goes, and it's on. All right, that little, it needs to get over more, so I gotta grab it here. Okay, it's good. All right, so they're back on. Just make sure you get any of the um, zip tie gunk out of here. Uh, little pieces of plastic and whatnot. Make sure you get them out of there, so. That is a super easy trick on how to get these uh, valve springs back on here. And you know, that stupid tool, the big C-clamp tool, you don't even need it. You just need zip ties. And you can pop them off with a screwdriver and pop them back on with a zip tie. So you don't need any special tools, really. Um, unless you don't want to waste zip ties, you know, you do this every single day. But, if y'all are watching this, you don't do it every single day, so. Alright, so now it's time to put the head gasket back on this thing. Alright, so you can see I have all my parts laid out here. I have a new head gasket here. This is a Sten's head gasket. It's aftermarket, but it'll get the job done. Then we have Annie C's over here, my torque wrench, inch pounds torque wrench set to the uh, proper value. Then we have my head over here with all the bolts in it, how they came out in the same order. And then I have everything cleaned up, polished up, you know, degreased, um, ready to go. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I'm going to put links in the description to the service manual that I use to do this, and it covers a whole bunch of Briggs and Stratton's. Um, it'll cover this one, you know, if you're working on a go-kart, it'll cover a lot, a lot of Briggs and Stratton models. So, it might cover all of them. I don't want to say, but y'all check out the link in the description because, um, you're going to have to use that to do this. Don't try to do it without it. So, it's got the bolt pattern in there and the, um, torque spec. The torque spec for this motor is 165 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 165 inch pounds. So that's where the torque wrench is set to. So let's just pop this thing on there. I mean, it's not like a car or a boat or something like that where it's more complicated. And this head gasket's a little bit rusty. Not too happy about that, but I don't know why. Um, whatever. I got it, so I'm going to use it, and we're going to get the job done. Alright, so we're just going to pop this thing on here. Now, um, I already chased all these threads. I ran a bolt in here and blew them out and flushed them out, you know, got all the uh, gunk out of here. Um, I had to run a tap in this one because I didn't have a re-threader thing, like, you know, um, a thread fixer thing. So I had to run a tap in here. It didn't take off any metal really, but it was so messed up and corroded up, I had to run it through there. But, um, you know, I don't really like doing that because I don't want it to be loose and take metal off and you know not seal good so it goes without saying make sure this thing is spotless you know clean enough to eat off before you do this but we're just gonna pop it on here now they say don't put anything on here just put it on here dry and maybe a light coat of oil or something um you know would be a good idea All right, now if you're working on an older motor, obviously your head's probably going to be warped. Um, there's no getting around it, but you can see this head gasket is um, is pretty thick. I mean, you know, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it's hopefully going to make up for that. But it only goes on here one way. You can see pretty clear. It goes on here one way, and we're just going to drop it on there, drop the head on there, and bolt this thing back together. Make sure the underside of this is all spotless too. Um, make sure there's no, you know, crud up in there. Sand, grit. You know, I've already polished the heck out of it. I've already cleaned everything up, blew everything out, brake cleaned everything, you know, acetone stuff. Um, this is good to go, so. Alright, so this is going to create a little bit of controversy here. I'm sure it will, but um, I'm putting anti-seize on these bolts. I don't care what y'all say. You know, do what you want. But um, I'm putting aluminum anti-seize on here 
because this one was stuck and it, it, it broke. So here's the remnant of that. And you had to see what I had to do to get off there. I had to torch it and, you know, do all kinds of stuff to get it off there, destroy it. Um, you know, I don't care. I'm putting anti seize on this whole entire motor when I put it back together because I don't like breaking bolts and I don't like wasting time. So do what you want, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, we're just going to co coat these bolts up here. You can see this one is a different color. This one is one I got out of a um, scrap yard, but you can see it's a different color and it's coated with that uh, color, with that uh, coating. I think it's some type of zinc coating like a um, grade 8 bolt is, and I'm sure they did that after the fact because they realized corrosion was an issue on these. Um, you know, it's a good idea, but uh, I'm not replacing all these bolts, so we're going to get these coated up. You're going to say, oh, you're globbing too much on. I don't care, dude. I really don't. Um, I'm going to get a good coating on it because, like I said, I'm not doing this again. You know, I don't want, I want them to come right out if I have to take this off. So let me get all these bolts coated up and uh, we'll check back here. All right, so I have all these bolts coated with anti-seas and um, we're going to snug them up. So here, I went and printed this out for you all. Here's the pattern right here and you can see the different patterns for the different style heads so the one we're going to be using is in the bottom left right there and uh you can see in relation to the spark plug hole um you know which one's number one so we're going to do first of all i'm just going to get them down and then i'm going to snug them up in this pattern and i'm probably going to torque them uh half torque spec and then go back and fully torque them all the way out so let's get these down first and then we'll snug them up in this order um this would be number one and then this would be number two um one two you know it doesn't really matter this isn't even hand tight really but um Four. Don't try to do this without knowing that torque pattern right there. I just showed y'all. But um, that service manual, like I said, I'll link to the PDF in the description because y'all are going to need to read that. Um, you want to make sure you do this right, obviously, because you spend all the time taking it apart. You want to put it back together right, so make sure you check that out. All right, so I have all of these uh, bolts here, finger tight or somewhat finger tight. And um, I have my torque wrench set to 82 inch pounds. So we're gonna follow this pattern here and I'm not gonna hold it up and see it so that y'all can, you know, see it the whole time. But we got one right here. Then we got two back here. Then we got three. We got four. We got five. Six. So we're on six right now. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so now I'm gonna adjust my torque wrench here and we're gonna go up to 165 inch pounds and then I'm gonna to torque it all and it's gonna be done. So let me adjust this torque wrench real quick. All right, so we're back now at 165 inch pounds and it's gonna be hard to read, but you're gonna to have to trust me. It's 165 inch pounds, so now we're gonna go back. We 
One, two, three, four, five. I'm watching my pattern down here. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Done. It's done. So that's the head gasket replaced. Um, it's done. It's that easy. And what do you know? Now my motor has compression again. I'm dying to get a compression test on this thing. All right, so I'm gonna stop playing with this motor, but that's how you do it right there. And I was just watching this, um, you know, down in the bottom corner right there while I was doing it. So y'all are gonna need that um, service manual right there. It's a great service manual. It covers, you know, it has like this um, model. It doesn't tell right here has like you know series 17 whatever it is 17,000 19,000 like all that stuff I'll link to it in the description so y'all can check it out down there um, as far as head gasket you know this thing's done I have to put it all back together and stuff so if you're ever working on a Briggs and Stratton motor and you run into one of these carbs right here this is what they call a flow jet carb and it's the absolute worst carb design I've ever worked on it sucks um the two halves warp so then it leaks gas all out here and you can never tune the thing right and if you see you see how it's bulged up in the middle it's warped because the top part is so thin and it's only held together with three screws one two three it warps like crazy and it leaks gas out there and you'll never ever ever get it tuned right so the quick fix for this is and it's a bit of a farmer fix but it works what you do is now the proper way to do this would be to to mill this flat but then again this parts warped here and then you would have to mill that flat and nobody has time for that so the quick fix is you double up on the gaskets so you can see here this is the um, original gasket that's supposed to be on there and the guy didn't have the exact same one, so I had to enlarge these holes here, but it's not really going to matter because the way it seals. But if you do this, make sure you get the, the right one. But I'm just concerned about sealing around here because that's where it leaks from. So you just double up the gaskets, and you can see um, why I had to modify it so that the gas passes through there. But it's not really going to matter on this back side because that's where like the bowl of gas is just sitting there. But it has to seal good um, right here where these holes are. So if you do this, make sure you find the right one. But I need this fixed, so I had to get this one and modify it. Um, I'm going to show you all what it looks like with both of these on there. Alright, so you can see I have both gaskets on here now. And it's way thicker now and hopefully it'll seal way, way better. But, um... You can see why I modified it right there so the gas could pass through because otherwise it wasn't right. So um, when you get the other half, and you put them together like that, you can see it takes up all the gap in there. And um, these are the worst carb design ever because they rattle and they get hot, you know, and they warp and... I've heard stories of um, people getting new ones out of the box, a hundred and whatever dollar carb straight from Briggs, and it's warped, or it warps right after you use it, and it leaks all over the place. So you'll never ever get your thing to run right with, uh, you know, a leaking carb, because it's going to leak gas out, and it could leak air in, and it's just going to make a mess. So you can see that it takes up the, the gap in there, and you're just going to have to crank down the bolts and hope you can get it um, tight enough to seal. But you can see the three bolts right there, and it's obviously going to put uneven pressure on there and not seal right, but it's the best you got, so...
there's one more little tip I want to show y'all. If you really, really, really need it to get it to seal, what you can do is you can get this aviation gasket maker and put it around the edge of that gasket where the bowl is and make a little sandwich out of it. Um, maybe put it between the two gaskets, you know, around the edge so that it'll seal right. This isn't silicone. It's like rosin core and stuff, and, it, and it's non-hardening, and it, it makes a mess, and hopefully it won't get in the car, but if you really have to, you can try to use some of this stuff around the edge in addition to the other gasket. All right, so here's the last tip I want to give y'all when working on these carbs. You can see I have the emulsion tube out here, and these have a problem um, with leaking. So it's another leaking problem, and this problem is so annoying, you're going to want to do this to fix it. What you can do is, right here you see... It has a Teflon sealing washer on here, and it's paper thin. It's like parchment paper thin, and there was a Briggs Service Bulletin PDF. I'll put a link in the description where y'all can find it, but um, it has part numbers for these little sealing washers, and what you do is you get one, and you put it on there, and when you thread it in here, it seals. So it leaks on this mating surface right here. Those mating surfaces, there's one right here and one down here, and it leaks right there. And you can see it just goes on there and it seals it up. Without this, my whole motor would not run right. And you'll never, ever, ever get it tuned right. So when it goes in there, it'll seal and it won't leak gas. Normally what happens is, is it leaks gas all out this little weep hole right here. And it makes a mess and it'll never run right. So today it's time to put the motor back on the tiller. We took the motor off the tiller and then I fixed everything that was wrong with it. So now it's fixed and ready to go back on the tiller. So y'all can see the setup right here is a motor, rope, it goes a hook right there, it goes up to a pulley and it comes down here and I'll give y'all a quick shot of up there and then we're going to put this thing back on. Alright so if we start down here you can see it's like that and the lighting is poor, I know, I'm sorry. It goes up to pulley and then it comes back down. Alright, so I had to readjust a little bit here to give y'all a better shot, but um, let's lift this thing up and see how it goes. You know, whatever happens, happens. You know, I could just, just lift the whole thing up and set it in there, but um, I'd rather do this. I'm just going to take some weight off of it. Well, that wasn't so bad. I got it in there. That was uneventful. Alright, so I got the motor up in there now. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I had to fight with it a little bit more to begin with the first time. But um, I got to get the pulley hooked back up, all the bolts, um, and he sees because I'm not dealing with that um, in the future. So let me get all this stuff hooked up and then we'll check back with y'all. And we'll see how this bad boy runs after all that hard work. Alright guys, let's crank this thing up and see how it runs.
All right. It's running amazing. I mean, it's running great. So, um, I was pointing out, and I know I'm creating a little shadow here, but I was pointing out while I was running the spots y'all need to tune. Um, it could stand to be a little fine-tuned a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to show y'all what y'all need to tune on this. And um, this is going to be a quick and dirty, but y'all are going to have to check out the link to the service manual I'll post down here because it's a bit more complicated than this. But this should get you pretty good to go, you know, a starting point. So what you do is we have the main needle right here, the main jet right here. So we're going to screw that in until it lightly seats. This is the low speed needle right here. We're going to screw this in until it lightly seats. Then this is the idle control right here, and we're going to screw it until we get a good idle. Now that's a bit more complicated than that. You have to put it at high speed and hold it like that and stuff to get it tuned right, um, to get the jets tuned right. But, you know, just to get it started, um, as a starting point for the sake of this video, what you do is screw them in until they lightly seat and then back them out, whatever the service manual says. Or if you didn't touch them, just leave them alone. But so if the service manual says back this out one and a quarter turns, make sure you back it out one and a quarter turns. Same with this one right here. Back it out. If the service manual says to back it out one and a quarter turns, back it out one and a quarter turns. And then, um, you know, it should start and it should run good. And then you have your um, governor lever right here. You can adjust that um, too to make sure that it runs good. But yeah, all that hard work paid off. So I hope you all enjoyed watching those videos as much as I did making them and, you know, fixing this thing. But I've already tested it out and it runs great. It just needs to be fine-tuned just a little bit. But um, I might make a video on this in the future. It's a little scrape blade I made for it out of scrap. And this thing is basically, you know, useless to me without that. That thing is amazing. So thanks for watching, y'all. If y'all enjoyed this video and all the rest of the videos I did working on this thing, Make sure you give me a huge thumbs up down below. And don't forget to check out those links in the description because I'll link y'all up to the service manual so that you can get your motor tuned perfectly. And um, don't forget to comment and subscribe while y'all are down there. And hit the little bell so that y'all get notified when I post new videos working on whatever other crazy stuff I'm working on. Peace.